First question is from Mark Wools. Can adding cycling to your training help grow your legs in any way, or will it be detrimental? Depends how it's added, I yeah. would say. Um, sprinting, and I've I've yes. been shocked by the muscle building effects on, on legs that sprinting can have several times. I've noticed it on myself. Now, I, now a little bit of a caveat here. My legs are – my upper legs are the most responsive part of my body. So I, I can always make my legs big if I want. Um, I wish the rest of my body was like that, but my legs tend to do that. But I do notice, and I have in the past done sprints on mm -hmm. a cycle, um, and I've done outdoor sprints, and both of which have caused my leg muscles to actually build and grow, in particular the cycling. Now, I have had clients who've done this as well. Now, I, I, again, another caveat, these are typically fit clients. So I'm not having you know Mrs. Johnson, who's just started with me, sprinting on a bike. These are typically people who worked out for me with me for a long time, very consistent, and we've thrown in a couple days a week of of hit cardio on a bike where they sprint, and they'll always, you know, I've had a, quite a few of them come back to me and be like, "Whoa, I'm noticing more development in my legs," and I think it's the explosiveness of the activity. Oh, absolutely. That's, happen. that's why I like the salt bike because it does have that low impact, uh, you know, way that you could you could implement that power. Uh, and, and be able to do that uh, in a way where it's kind of more control. Because I used to do hill sprints, and I noticed the same thing. It, I, I got great muscle development out of my quads, and my legs overall grew uh, as I was doing these hill sprints. And then I kind of, you know, used that same kind of uh, interval sequence on, on the assault bike and noticed, you know, the same type of gains to throw in the mix. Mm -hmm. There's a, it's, there's a fine line here, though. Yeah, yep. it's, it's a be short window. Because... You know, you guys are both advocating sprinting on the bike. And if you're somebody who does, like like Taylor's into cycling right now, and he's cycling 60 minutes to 90 minutes minimum every time he does this, he goes on mm -hmm. for a long ride. Like, that's not a great way to build muscle in your legs. Mm -hmm. uh, just because at that point, it's just like so a, a runner who runs for a long, long period of time, it's not advantageous for your body to carry a bunch of muscle yeah. On it, so it'll you're it'll, teaching it efficiency, right? So it, it it's conflicting. It's a conflicting message. Now, if you're somebody who is squatting, you know, three times a week, you're eating, and that's the other thing too. You also got to take in consideration when you get on a bike the amount of calories that you that you burn, even if it's only for a short duration, say thirty minutes or whatever. Like that that can be a high calorie burn. You could burn eight hundred calories in thirty minutes of cycling easily, especially if it's high intensity. So if you're somebody who has a hard enough time eating enough calories to build and put size on, and then you add in cycling and hoping that that will build muscle in your legs, it might have the reverse effect because now you're starting to burn more calories than you can even consume. So there's that fine line there. But shoot, going on a 12-minute a like post-workout you know, cycling sprint or get on like the recumbent bike or the cycling bikes and do like – you know, interval sprints for 12 minutes, like after, like, fuck, that could be incredible. But again, still making sure you're fed. So, so here's what I did. And this, uh, this was my legs got probably the biggest they'd ever gotten when I did this is I did two or three days a week of training my legs with weights, which typically included squats and lunges and Bulgarian split stand squats and those types of exercises. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, I would do a 15 minute, um, hit workout on, uh, an assault bike. Um, with high tension and explosive power. And when I did that, man, my legs just and what and, and part of the reason why I think they grew is one, it's explosive. It's very explosive. So I can I can I can output a lot of power um, in a different way than I can with weights. And the second reason is that the that the short bouts of intensity with the bike gave me more stamina, which contributed to better workouts with my legs, with the squats. Too. I would also yeah. think that it would facilitate recovery faster, it too. Did. Yeah. It did. It right. did. So I just get these crazy pumps. Yeah, so that, that would be great. Like and that. some of the most muscular, athletic, like athlete legs you'll ever see, ever. Forget, okay, besides bodybuilders, obviously bodybuilders and powerlifters are going to have the most developed legs. Ice but skaters. It, the, ice, the sprinting, sprinting ice skaters and the sprinting cyclists. The sprinting cyclists. Have you ever seen yeah. the some of the top Monstrous. level? Monstrous. They have pro bodybuilder legs, and it's funny because yeah. they have super lean upper bodies. It's the most uh, lopsided, you know, bottom developed body yeah. I've ever seen. But the legs look like they, they could be on the Olympia stage. Yeah. They're that muscular and crazy. I was looking. trying to explain this to my, you know, sister-in-law and, and brother-in-law are both like really into Peloton and I'd 
I picked this question mainly because that's that you know company. It, it's so popular right now. Everybody thinks that like that is like all they need right now to get in shape. Mm-hmm. And so to try and like unpack that and be like, well, here's really how I would use a, you know a bike in my house, even if I was trying to train. Like, yes, I would use it for uh, sprints and intervals and things like that. But also, like, you have to incorporate weight training. Yeah. 